Hello once more on this dark and uh, dismal, uh, almost December, it's almost December. Yes. Uh, November day, we're down at Tres Gaff again, myself and Nigel, um, and we've, we've pretty much got to pick up where we left off, uh, talking about the milestones that Nigel has um, approached during his lifetime, which he believes, and this is not my words, he believes have made his life... Um, a lot better because a lot of people are living with learned disabilities, difficulties, whatever you want to call it, complex needs, and life is even more difficult for them. Uh, and if they haven't got close friends around them, people who value them and respect them, then that's a, a lonely life um, along with the complex needs. So we're going to start with Nigel. Um, we finished talking about Jacqueline, and that was a strong friendship, Nigel. Is a strong friendship, so I keep talking in the past tense. Um, but you also developed other friendships as well, in tandem with the one with Jacqueline. And I think, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, because some of the friends were actually around anyway when you two got together. Mark was one, Ray yeah, was the other. Yeah, there were, yeah. No, you mentioned myself and, and Trey. Uh, which other people did you become friends with that you remember? You mentioned oh. them earlier. Oh, Gary. Yeah, Gaz. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, God! Oh yeah. <laughs> Anybody else that you you remember that used to come along to the to the group or the charity, whichever it was? It was uh, Jennifer. She yeah, to Jen and Lucy as well. Lucy Lou, yeah. Um, what does she do actually, Lucy? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard from her for a while. No. no. I mean, I was gonna gonna ring, but I didn't have the number anywhere. But I was gonna ring to see how they were doing. Our mum wasn't that, but it's never got round because they were dealing with the lockdown, that weren't we? Yeah. Uh, well, that's with DB as well. Um, so, the people that you mentioned, Nigel, um, along with myself and uh, Trey, why do you think it's important to have those friendships in your life? For you personally. Contrast if you didn't have that. How would you feel? Uh, well, uh, if I didn't have it, I would feel unhappy and stuff, and where you get the uh, depression would come in and get worse, and the, the anxiety as well. So, how does having the friends that you've talked about now, and yeah, they are friends because they were built on uh, a lot of um, time spent and you know, getting to know each other, and, and you know, each person's kind of idiosyncrasies, the things that annoyed you, but you actually worked it out together. Yeah, but, um, uh, so, if we look at friendship itself and the people that you've got to, to, to know, yeah, including ourselves, what do you think is important in those friendships that you, that you have to have in order to have a strong friendship? What kinds of things do people have to do or not do in those friendships? So they could be sustained. Think well, of, just... Sorry, go on, Nigel. Just have res uh, respect and that for each other, and uh, trust as well, because you 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 don't want to have a person that is a bit iffy and stuff, and people that you can trust and say, look, well, this is <coughs> this is uh, the form of God, and then we can go ahead, we can go ahead and talk about it and. Uh, Sort someone out. Yeah, because I mean, you know, Jackie, you know, you had a bit of a kind of rocky start, we <laughs> as did we have. mentioned on the previous podcast. We did, yeah. But Jackie was big enough and you were big enough to work it out. Yeah. You know, and, and that, that for me is how strong friendships are built. Uh, when we talk about respect, I mean, even a simple thing, uh, for instance, and we always have a stereotypical thing about the toilet seat where the bloke leaves mm -hmm. the toilet seat, and I actually don't, so that's a lot of rubbish. Uh, I always put the seat down, yeah. um, and then I know people who are not of my gender who actually clear the seat up. Um, but say, for instance, a simple thing like you know, someone goes to the toilet, has a wee in the toilet, and doesn't flush the uh, wee away. Yeah, and you come in to, to have your uh, ablution, yeah. and you have to flush the toilet. Yeah. Now, if it's a good, strong friendship, you'll be able to go to that person and say, "Excuse me." He didn't flip in flush the toilet when I was in before. And if that person, oh, sorry, now, you know, because they might have been used to that yeah. in their own life before they, before they met you. So you have to be big enough to change 
Yeah, but definitely. Changing the way where you respect another person's yeah. uh, wishes, and that, that's something a lot of people don't do, and that's where a lot of relationships go wrong. Yeah? Even, again, you know, if, if you go to the toilet and it's a bit pooey, <laughs> A bit pongy, you know, we're in the toilet at the moment. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll soon leave the toilet for yeah. don't we? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you know you've met a bit of a hum in there, but you, you know that when the other person goes in, they're, they're not going to have to walk into, into that. Now, if that, oh, for Christ's sake, no, you want to stink in that toilet, you know, what have you been doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> How's it going to make you feel? Well, you feel bad and you feel... Embarrassed? Embarrassed and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, so what would be a better approach? Because it might be that person, you know, didn't, well, obviously wouldn't intend to, to do that. And if you flushed away the toilet, then, you know, what else can you do? But there might be a tin of air freshener on the uh, the top of the toilet where you can just spare yeah. around before you... But how else could that other person deal with that? Because they just lived on their own before. Yeah. Well, they could go in the toilet and do what the hell they wanted and there's nobody else to bother them. <laughs> yeah, like we, you, you're, you're on your own as well, Nigel. You don't have to worry about that, do you? No. Unless somebody's come at the door and you have to race like hell to, to sort it out. But how could the other person approach it if they started living with you? Well... Without making you feel uncomfortable? Well, sit down and talk about it and say, look, I've done this and sorry about the... Uh, yeah. The smell. Why don't we? Well, you have to be apologise. It's just that's just as it is. But mm. but you, you must have gone to outdoor towns sometimes, and you think, God, has that person died in there? Yeah. You know, and and, and it, it, it's quite common in, in public towns, sadly, because quite half the time they don't even flush it. No, they don't. Or the towns are all covered. And that's a lack of respect as well. Jeez. So you could even do something like, well, why don't we put some air fresher on the back? And that might help. Yeah. Or even look at the reasons why it's strong. And a lot of meat eaters, right? And a lot of the people, when you go in public toys, there's not really public toys left now. A lot of people eat lots of McDonald's foods and stuff like that. And that really does cause a stink when it's passed through your, your system. Mm, alcohol as well causes Alcohol, it. heavy drinkers, that's another one, you know, it's, it's really kind of... But again, you can talk about it together. Yeah, you can, yeah. You know? Things like, if you leave that smell like that again when I go in, I'm going to put your head down the fucking toilet. <laughs> nice. That's the approach that I would take, Nigel. The subtle approach. And then while you're down, I'm going to flush it. Right. That's not abuse, is it? I don't know. I don't, yeah. Is it? Is it? I don't think the relationship would last long. <laughs> no, I don't think it would. <laughs> I'm going to throw this across the train now because uh, this is a kind of open-ended uh, discussion as well, although it's about your milestones, Nigel. Uh, I think Nigel fundamentally does understand the importance of the foundation for a strong friendship. I think Nigel always did do, yeah, but he didn't really develop the strength of friendships, I think, until later on as he got older. You know, and he realised then, oh, well, if I do that, that's going to annoy that person or whatever. Yeah. What, what do you think contributes towards uh, a good, strong friendship? The kind of one that Nigel's got now with Jacqueline. I think it's, it's one, being able to get on with somebody, having a laugh with somebody, a friendship um, and a trust. Um, what do you mean by getting on? Because getting on could be getting onto a horse or a bike. Yeah, or... I'm thinking more of being able to have similar interests, but also uh, being interested or accepting the other person's interests and listening and talking to each other. Do you have to have similar interests in order to, to build a strong friendship? I think there's sometimes um, that's a leading for some people if they have a similar and then they can explore other things that are completely different. So is that the same as you know you like in Formula One and Nigel like in Formula One? You develop a strong friendship, uh, <laughs> similar interest, do you think so I was no. no, I think it's movies with us though, isn't it? We, we yeah. watch similar movies. Yeah, movies. Yeah. So we can talk about similar movies. Formula One is off the cards. <laughs> yeah, <it is> on. <laughs> so let, let's talk about respect then. Now, if you haven't got similar interests and you've got a, quite a strong interest in one area and that person has a strong interest in the other area, yeah. right? Now we're talking about respect here. Let's talk about Formula One then, okay? So you live together, right? Hypothetically, obviously. And on a Saturday afternoon, 
you like to, sorry, well, yeah, Saturday, Sunday, you like to practice on the Friday. Yeah. And your partner, yeah, lives in the same house. Do you expect your partner to like Formula One? Or, if you know she doesn't like Formula One, is it fair to expose her while she's in the house to persistent Formula One? Is that respect for your friend? No, not really, no. no. In what way? Well, I, I'm, I'm, obviously I'm watching this, you can go, <laughs> go somewhere else. I actually live with somebody that did that with me. But uh, I, I wouldn't go down that line, though. But, but how would you work it out? I, th I, I mean, it, some people, if they like something a lot, they won't compromise. Uh, and I'm watching it, and that's it. There's nothing else is on the to uh, television. Not at all, at all. Sorry. Sorry. Come on, the, on the, the television. That. There's no other options. There's no, you know, you, you just don't have a, a choice. Um, if somebody wants to watch it, that's it, and that's kind so, of like obsessional, really. So where's the compromise then? Because I, I, firm, I believe in every drop of rain that falls. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, there's the king there for a moment as well, but I decided to have a well. song. No. Okay, this is my take on it. I don't believe that when you live with someone that you have to rescind on your own interests and your own passions, your own beliefs, etc. Mm -hmm. Because that is a rocky road to go down. And actually that's disrespecting your other part, partner, whatever you want to call it. So for me, it's about, again, and you did this with, with Jacqueline, looking at ways where you can still follow your passions and enjoy things, etc. We can also still live together and get on together. Yeah. So what compromise could you two make in order for you to fulfill your passion and interest and drive towards, excuse the pun, national drive, mm. uh, towards your Formula One? How could you work that out without letting go of your personal uniqueness? How could you work it out? Okay, how could you not work it out? What what wouldn't work then? If you're passionate about Formula One that you expose Trey to when you're living together. What would you do that would upset the relationship in a way where you probably wouldn't come back from it? Or it would fester. When you watch Formula One at home, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you've got it on TV, is it on feedback loop? It's on quite a lot. Sometimes. Yeah. Is it kind of loudish? You've got it to a certain level where you can hear it okay? Got to a certain level, yeah. Yep, right. So put Trey in the house now then. Yeah. In the flat, sorry. What's going to go wrong? All sorts. She's not going out. She's, she's stopping in, which is her right, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But it's Formula One day. How could you two compromise? Well, it's Formula One weekend, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Formula One weekend. <laughs> Apart from Trey moving out for the weekend. <laughs> How could you work it out, Nigel? What compromises could you make? Let's look at a simple one then. What about the volume on your TV? Well, that would have a different level. All smart TVs now have got inputs for headphones, yeah. haven't they? I think they have, uh, some of them. Well, they should have anyway. Well, um, has. And, uh, or maybe turn it, well, have it turned down, or if there's another option of uh, seeing it again later on in the day, or recording it and watching it another time. Yeah, when... see, I would say that as disrespecting your own yeah. Passions and interests and beliefs. Right. Me, personally, uh, obviously, I mean, I wouldn't have it blasting and I wouldn't have it no, on 24-7. No, I wouldn't. But, but, if you like watching it live, which you obviously do, then if you compromise whereby you say, well, okay, well, I, I just won't watch it live then. And, and what, what's going to happen in that relationship? It's going to be uneven, isn't it? Extremely uneven, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what else could you do? Apart from mobile, we can't. Well, I mean, I... I, I, what, I what, what did you expect your ex to do in relation to his uh, interest in motorbikes and F1 or whatever? What would you have expected to happen? Well, to be honest, I, I think when you're moving with somebody that has that kind of interest, you don't realise just how much of an interest it is. So I remember Sky uh, came in and... Um, 
he decided he wanted to sky for the sport and it was on every day at some part of the day so what i had to do was find another interest there was nothing else on the television so i actually went into another room and i did what i wanted to do so let's stop there then what are your thoughts on that night what she just said about her, her ex um and the way he followed his passion and, and interests what do you think was well wrong with i wouldn't that? know everything because she's in another room and uh, she's not sitting outside talking or so uh so we're talking like 24 7 you know i mean i, I know people like this where it's literally mm -hmm. an obsession uh, it's not actually OCD, it's just an obsession, basically. I mean, OCD is a condition and it's... Yeah, it's somewhat on most weeks, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Well, what about, because remember, this is about compromise. If the main room is overtaken by your interest, you could remove that interest from that main room yeah. and take it into another room. People now have games rooms and, you know, they have all games chairs. All right, well, he's still there now, he's interviewed with them. So that, you know, you can follow your own interests. And it's not, I don't see that as being uh, secluded. No. Because it's a room. Just to say another mm -hmm. room. But you're allowing the other person to have space within that same house. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you can enjoy your F1. If it's blasting through the walls, that's a different matter. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, you know, and I mean, obviously, if that was the case, then you know, it's your right to say, "I forgot that." Now, you just take it down a touch, or you just put headphones on. Yeah. Because a lot of game people now, they actually wear headphones, so they're not exposing the other house or whatever to constant noise. So, would you see that as a as a compromise? Would yeah. that work? Yeah, it would. Huh? What yeah. are your thoughts? Well, yeah, which is, in some ways is what I did because um, I. I had a room for my interests, so I would go into that room, like I have a craft room now, and I would get in grocery. Yeah, but who, who should have made the compromise? Um, I don't know, but because, obviously... Which which room was all this taking place in? Well, the living room, because that's where the TV was. Right, so that's a shared room, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right, so he didn't compromise in that shared room. You're the one that had to make the compromise. Yeah. That is an uneven and unbalanced. Mm. Which, don't always have the option or to have a Well, well, you don't, but, but you know, there's always ways around things. Um, but if people do that, it's like, you know, say Trey was watching some girly thing on TV, although you can't say that now because it's not pretty correct. You know, something that you couldn't stand, like Sound of Music or something like that, and she was, you know, blasting out of the TV. How would you feel? Uh, no, what would you do? Just leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> no compromise, is it? No. no. And if you layer that and layer that and layer that over, over months, over years, yeah. you end up causing problems between you both. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. you're disrespecting the other person's wishes. You haven't sat down and look, I'm sorry about that. I didn't really mean to blast that mm. out there. I'll tell you what, you don't like selling it. I'll just go in there and, and watch it if you've got a second TV, yeah. obviously. So there's always a way around it, isn't there? Yeah, there is, yeah. And that for me is respect. And in the absence of respect, the relationship is doomed. Totally doomed. There's no way back. I know that from time spent mm -hmm. counselling. You know, it's almost like, well, what's wrong? We're watching the uh, uh, F1 on TV. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so anything else? Any other important factor in a, in a strong friendship um, that you can think of that needs to be in there? Other than respect. Trust. Trust? Now you mentioned that, Nigel. Yeah, I did. So I'll throw this across to you. What, how, how would you define trust? What is trust to you? Uh, I don't... Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll contrast it then. If, yeah. if I badmouth you uh, to all and sundry and you find out, right, and you thought that you trusted me, how would you feel? Well, I feel disappointed that that person's done that. And how would that affect our friendship? Well, it would be uh, compromised, wouldn't it? You would, uh, so, well, the way, why do you say that about me and uh, vice, maybe vice versa as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's doomed, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, doomed. Because Nigel's known over the years that, that if I've got an issue, I'll front him up. 
you know, he might not like it, and you know, but he'll fire back, and we'll have yeah. a bit of a set to, but we'll work it out. Yeah. Jackie and, and Nigel, same way again. Oh, for God's sake, now he's constantly buying me chocolate, and oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> I know why! <laughs> I know why he's buying Sweet me, Daddy. <laughs> Sweet little <you'll> fry. <laughs> Sweeten her up. Yeah, what, once, once a trust is betrayed, um, and that isn't too uh, harsh a word either, there's no going back. No, there isn't. I don't care what people say, but oh well, you know, we, we've got over that now and such and such. There must have been a reason why the person did that at the outset. And there's a good chance it's going to happen again. Yeah, definitely. You know, so you're never going to trust that person again, are you? No, you know. So that's crucial in a relationship. Yeah. And I don't mean about the person going and shagging somebody else or whatever else. I mean just respecting that person enough to know that, you know, you're not going to do anything that's going to offend them or hurt them or whatever. And if you do, in some respect, that you don't know, you're going to apologise. In a way that's open. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sorry, I, I didn't mean to go off like that at all. I'm a bit a bit stressed lately, you know, whatever. You can go back from that. Too right. If someone does it and walks away and doesn't take the time to do that, it's not going back. No. That says more about that person than you. Anything else in friendship? Because we are on that subject and that's the milestone that we're at. Yeah. Any other factor that you think is important, Nigel? What if you've got a problem? Right, you've got a problem, yeah. uh, and it's one that you you're not quite sure what to do. Yeah, yeah. So you go to your partner, and you say, "Oh, you got a minute, uh, uh, Trey? Uh, I'm not quite sure what to do here at all. You know, because I'm trouble at work, and you know, I, I don't know how to to get round this at all. Someone's been mouthing off about me, and I haven't done it, and whatever." If that person says something like, oh, well, for God's sake, work, politics, you know, just get on with that, how are you going to feel? No. What would you expect that person to do? They'll help you and talk and share the problem with you. And try to... Help you. Try to work it out and support. You know, it's, yeah. even if they can't do anything about it, it's a, it's a support. They've and, listened. Yeah. yeah. You. And that can actually lift quite a bit of weight off the problem. Yeah. You know, because quite often at work, and I know this from work politics and so does Trey as well, uh, once it's in, right, it's very hard to disentangle it. Mm. You know, and then people gang up together and, and you know, I so and so said such and such, and you're stuck in the middle, you know, and, and apart from saying, why don't you all just heck off, which of course you can't at work, mm. can you? Um, no. It's very hard to, to carry that. Because you've got to go back again the following day to work. Yeah. But if you sit down with your partner, and you kind of say, "Well, look, you know, maybe you know, get that person on one side and say, look, you know, you, you shouldn't be doing this, and you know, don't even go there about going to the manager and mention them because we no, don't know no, what happens not. there. Don't even mention about whistleblowing because you end up pariahed basically. Yeah. Um, it's hard, and if you haven't got somebody to go back to no. to talk about it then it's going to be hard, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And that's respect as well. Too right. And understanding as well. So, one other thing we haven't mentioned, you haven't mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, one would be important to me is feeling safe with that person, emotionally and physical. I think that's important. I find that important. Yeah. So, that was the one I was going to mention. Thank you, Trey. So let's have a, for instance, right, your other half comes back and they've had a bad day at work and they start banging cupboard doors and, and chuntering and, and ah, bloody such and such and ah, I'm really sick of all that. And then you try to help by saying, oh, you know, what's wrong? Ah, oh, bit of math, then. Yeah, well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> ah, you women. <laughs> um, I want a wife. <laughs> <laughs> me mot. <laughs> um, if that's the reaction, yeah, um, to to your you know reaching out to try to help, how are you going to feel? They've gone off and slammed the door. They've clearly opened up about an issue at work that they're not happy about, and you've tried to help them and they've stormed off. What are you going to do? Find out what's going on. Right, so you go to them and try to find out what's going on, but they don't really respond. Oh, you don't know anything about it at all. You know, what's it going to do with you anyway? It's because you mentioned it to me. <laughs> How's that day going to pan out? How are you going to feel? Are you going to feel close to that person? Not really, no. No, you're going to be left with it, aren't you? So who's yeah. got the problem now? 
you. Yeah. yeah. And they've done that on purpose. Because people that do that are very devious. Yeah, yeah. yeah they'll make out they're really, really upset or whatever. Mm -hmm. What they actually do is give it to you. Yeah. Their angst, their anger, their, their upset or whatever. And actually, if you looked at it probably and you went into work and had a look at it, you think, what? What's your problem? You're the problem. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's why your workmates are treating you that way, because you're a nobed. Yeah. Not me, obviously, because... <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Anything else that's not as important, because that aspect is, is crucial, yeah, the emotional is. aspect. Anything else? See, I see this as, 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 as something that's really, really, really crucial in a relationship. Yeah? I don't mean all the bloody harps and the little mm -hmm. fairies wandering about and all the rest, rest of it. That you two can do together that will enrich that relationship. Laughter. Mm, yeah. Fun. Yeah. Humour. You two used to have such a lot of fun, didn't you? Yeah, we did. I mean, yeah. Jacqueline was an absolute scream. She mm -hmm. was. As soon as she went like that, you knew. <laughs> All right, Nigel, you know, <laughs> he walked through from the kitchen with no pants on. <laughs> and I went, Nigel? <laughs> 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 so fun and laughter, and share that fun and laughter as well. Yeah. Now, the reason I mention that is because sometimes if you get with the wrong person, yeah, you do. Yeah, they'll only have a laugh when it suits them. Yeah. yeah. And what they'll do is they'll make you feel uncomfortable sure. when you laugh at something that, that's, that you think is quite funny. And they'll say things, what are you laughing at? You're always bloody laughing at you. <laughs> you know, and, and how's it going to make you feel when, when you've found something really funny and they've slapped you down? Is that sharing the fun and laughter? No, it isn't. What would you say to your partner then to bust out laughing about something? Which, <laughs> which is quite normal uh, in this uh, area, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh... What would you say to her? Say so you suddenly bust out laughing about something, what would you say to her? What are you laughing about? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> and then she can say, yeah, well, just watch that on there now. So, 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 so. You might not find it funny because humour is quite a personal thing anyway. Yeah. It is, yeah. But you took the time to try to understand. A bit like yeah. he looks at my Facebook posts and can't work them out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. I, don't, I don't get that. <laughs> Tell me about that. And suddenly start laughing about something that we're laughing at. I know. What are you laughing at? Yeah, humour is quite personal, isn't it? Oh, it is, yeah. yeah. Um, so we, we'll round up now because it's 25 past 11, I think. Yeah. Um, so that milestone you reached now is with all the friends that you made. And, yeah. You know, some you managed to sustain, some you had no, you know, no control of, and sadly uh, Raymond passed away. Um, what message would you send out to people who are living, you know, reasonably lonely lives and they've got a complex need or, uh, you know, they've got a learned disability or learned difficulty or whatever? Would, what would you say to them about friendship? What would you advise them? Is it important to you? Yeah, friendship is, yeah. Friendship is important and uh, and you can have someone to talk to. And how can, if they if they don't know what to do now, how can they, you know, I mean, I'm not talking about things like the charity club where they're all throwing themselves around and, you know, hitting walls or whatever. Um, how can, can they be enabled to develop these strong friendships? Do you think? How did you develop your strong friendships? Did you go to places? Did you do things? How did it work out? I went to places, yeah, and did things and stuff like that, yeah. And just made, made friends and that. So would you advise people to, to, to say to their support staff, look, you know, I'd like to go to, to such and such. Uh, you know, not, not an organised club, but somewhere where, you know, there's similar people uh, to them, but they can maybe sit down and have a drink or a cuppa or a meal or whatever. Yeah. Do you think that'd be a good way to, to, to open up some networks? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So just going and take them to uh, one spot, go to different places. Yeah, which tends to happen, doesn't it, really? Yeah. Uh, I would say that people haven't made friends that way, because no. you know, I'm not totally against it, but I think it's probably better if it's less, you know, less of a kind of a, well, controlled atmosphere, yeah. really. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Staff sitting around on the phone and, you know, you're left sitting there like that and oh yeah um, <laughs> and you know if you think about Gary for instance you know yeah. Gary probably knows a lot of people 
But he hasn't really got a, a, a big no, circle of friends. No. no, he hasn't. So he's he's actually living a reasonably kind of, I would think, a lonely life. And that phone call from you is massive it is, uh, for him. And him ringing you is massive, oh, yeah. you know, for both of you, really. But well, you're uh -huh. reaching out to each other. You're reaching out to... Oh, <laughs> how are you doing, Nigel? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it's reaching out. Uh, and, you know, I, I like to think you two have got a good, strong friendship as well. Yeah, we have. You know, because he always, always, you know, when I had a longer phone call, he always asked, oh, how's Nigel? <laughs> 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 oh, how's Tracy? <laughs> <laughs> because he was genuinely interested in how you were. And the same as when, so, you know, certainly, yeah. you know, when he rings up and asks how I am or Tracy yeah. or whatever. Uh, and that's important, isn't it? Yeah. To have that in your life. So, next milestone. Uh, I know what the next milestone is, but obviously I'd rather you thought of one, <laughs> if you can, <laughs> Nigel. Any milestone, anything important in your life that that's, um, you, you think has been crucial in helping you to remain happy and reasonably comfortable? Think about what we've done, for instance, myself and Trey. It's helped you stay well. What about your weight? Oh, yeah, just... Uh, just trying to... get to a reasonable weight. And why is that important? Because, I mean, you, you were never overweight, Nigel. You always had a good build. Yeah. Um, I mean, Jackie used to slap it over that picture. Of <laughs> and, uh, oh, <laughs> so Nigel, <laughs> what's happened to him? Yeah. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I don't, you probably don't remember, I already remember we had the picture, and she's actually sitting there, and she's like, look, that's what you used to look like. Yeah. What's, what are you doing? <laughs> what happened? I love you, but Nigel! How <laughs> <laughs> they like put pressure on you. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're left with ill health, you're less likely to be happy, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. Because you're yeah. worried about your, 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 your health and well-being. So, would you see that as important um, yeah. for, 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 for services um, to, to work on with you? And I don't mean controlling it and, you know, telling you what to do, but just working with you so you can keep yes. well. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah? So I think we'll, the next milestone is going to be yeah. the, the pivotal point, the turning point, where you became obese. Yeah. And that was a difficult time for you, that. It was, yeah. And then you ended up locked in a room, scrapping around for cheese, remember? <laughs> yeah, I had to do that, yes. Yeah. Even the mice And that was imposed by, by Trey. Um, uh, yeah. Cool. And, and I think you lost six <laughs> stone in a... <laughs> I think you lost six stone in a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Social services banging on the door. Um, so, yeah, well, look at that, Nigel. That's all right with you. Yeah. And we'll, we'll look at how you managed to climb out of it. Yeah? How you managed to move forward. Because this will help a lot of people, I think. Yeah. Because a lot of people, especially on these lockdowns, have been comfort eating yeah. and piled lots of work and things on. Uh, and that's just not everybody in the mainstream, but people who are in supported living as well. Oh, certainly, yeah. You know, because the whole thing about choice was pretty much, oh, do you want to go for McDonald's? Yeah. You know, which is normally driven by the staff member, of course. Um, so that's the next one. Yes, Any definitely. Any parting shots before we go? Any no. comments? No, been no. a good one. That's been a good one, yeah. So that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Thank you.